they may show how upright the Lord is. My rock in the very fault. scatter seed on the ground and would sleep 
and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with the sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto God. You may be seated. Do we have any kids with us today? We have two? <laughs> this week while I was working on the sermon, I realized that what I was working on was especially meant to be heard by children. So I wanted to invite our children to come up for a children's sermon this morning. Yeah, they might be having too much fun. I might be the disappointment in the day. <laughs> So there once was a man who did such amazing things and said such wonderful things that people wanted to know, wanted to follow him wherever he went. And they wanted to understand the things that he said. So they asked him a question. They said, what is the kingdom? <laughs> Do any grown-ups ever wonder what the kingdom of heaven is like? I see some hands out there. Yep, yep. I think I think this is a common question that we might have. Yeah. So today, in our scripture lessons, we hear Jesus giving some answers to this very big question: What is the kingdom of heaven like? And he gives us two things. The first one is he says, it's like when somebody comes and scatters seeds. Have you ever scattered seeds on the ground? Have you ever helped with that? Yeah. And then this, and he rises, and he sleeps, and he rises, and he sleeps, and when one day he gets up, and he gets what's all over. What happens when you scatter seeds on the ground? That's right, they'll start to grow up. So his second story is kind of like that. 
He says, it's as if a person took a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, you see what I'm saying? You do? Yeah, you don't care. No, you can see that. A mustard seed is so small that you could barely see it on the tip of your finger. And the person puts it in the ground. And what comes out of the ground is a big bush that is so big and so grand, like a tree, that all the birds come and they want to make their home in the tree. Yeah. Now, do you think you'd want to make your home in that tree? No, you wouldn't <laughs> want to make a home in the tree. Would anybody want to make a home in a tree like that? No? Oh, we have some people that want to make their home in a tree. I don't know. Tree climbers in, in the room? Yeah. Yeah. So I think about how Jesus is saying this. I wonder about this kingdom part of heaven and how it works. And one of the things that we do every week in church, and maybe you do it other times, is we say a prayer together that Jesus taught us that starts with our Father. Do you know that prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And here's the part I want you to know. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus kind of gives us a little hint there, right? He's telling us that what he's talking about in heaven, he also wants to happen where? On earth, right? Around us. So when Jesus tells these stories, they're called parables. That's a really big word, isn't it? And they're stories. When Jesus tells us these stories, he's telling us about things that we understand. We understand what it means to scatter seeds and plant seeds, right? Yeah. And I think he does that partially to help us understand what he's saying. But I think that there's another part, too. I think he's also saying we can be a part of this. Because when we plant things, we plant things, right? And so Jesus is saying we want to plant something that grows so big that people want to come and be a part of it. Yeah, right? So I was thinking this week, when we're planting things that we want to invite people to come in, what kinds of things do you think we want to plant that would make people want to come be with us because they know it is a safe place? Not just here at St. John's, that's part of it, but just our communities, our schools, our neighborhoods, even in our houses. What kind of things would we want to plant so that people would know that that's a place where they feel safe? Any ideas? And grown-ups can answer this too. Kindness. 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 Fun. Acceptance. Acceptance. Justice. Justice. Inclusion. Inclusion. Peace. Peace. Can I hear peace? Love. Patience. Patience. Belonging. Belonging. Ooh, I'm always like, yeah, I like these words. Do you think it's also possible that we could plant things that would make people not want to be with us? That we would not feel safe? Hate. Yeah, hate. And ang what? Judgment. Judgment. Anger. Anger. Yeah. Rejection. Rejection. Is it in your head? So what kind of things do you want? Do we, do we want to plant those kinds of things, or do we want to plant the things that are going to have people not want to be with us? What do you think? The good plants. The good plants. I think so, too. I think so, too. I think we want to be out in our world planting love and acceptance and peace and patience and, um, and ju uh, justice and inclusion. I'm trying to remember all the things that were just said there. So I need you to help me with something, okay? And then I'm going to ask the grown-ups to help me too. So they need to pay attention, all right? Are you guys willing to, to trust me to help me do something? Okay, 
I'm going to teach you a poem. Okay? <laughs> All right. I plant a little seed in the cold, dark ground of my kitchen. I plant a little seed in the cold, dark ground. Out comes the yellow sun, big and young. Down comes the cool rain, soft and slow. Up grows the little plant, grow, grow, grow. All right, we're going to do that again. Can you do that with me? And this time when our plants grow, we're going to grow into two plants. Okay, let's do it slow. I plant a little seed in the cold, dark ground. Out comes the yellow sun, big and round. Down comes the cool rain, soft and slow. Up comes the little plants, grow, grow, grow. Okay, now this is where I need your help, okay? You get a choice. So we need to start spreading the things that are going to that are going to grow out in the world that make this world a good place that people want to be, right? So do you remember the two things that Jesus said we could do? We could scatter seeds, right, like that, or we could plant seeds. So I would like to. I'm going to help you too. I would like to invite you to either go over and around and scatter seeds. And you don't have to go up to anybody if you want to scatter seeds. Just scatter them out there on crumbs. Or you can go and you can touch a grown up and plant a seed. Okay? And then if you think of a word that you want to be planting, you could use that word. Love. Love. You can just scatter them. Okay? And then we're going to come back and we're going to meet here. And we're going to do that poem again with all the grown-ups. Okay? Are you ready? All right, I'm going to help you. And you get to choose how you scatter your seeds or plant your seeds. Okay? Let's go. Do you want to come? Scatter the seeds of love and patience and scatter, scatter. Love.
Thank you all for being brave and doing that. Thank you. because we always want to attract things to our gardens. Let us all rise in body or spirit as we recite together the words of the nice man. We believe in the Lord God, the Father of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, we have not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was saved man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious light. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and the words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and as a kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son to his worship and glorify. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to lift our prayers to God, let us remember those specific ones from our St. John's Epitome. For our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the deputies and all kids to general intervention. We pray for all living creatures who have been impacted by natural disasters. We pray for those struck down by war, violence, and hate. We pray for those in harm's way due to civil unrest, especially Ukraine and the Middle East. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Harry Oswald, Edith Ledbetter, Colleen Walton, Sylvia and Steve Lusbo, Charlene and Dr. Edmund Boyd, the Reverend Betsy and Steve McElroy, and for those preachers who have asked to be on the St. John's prayer list, including Pete Pringle, Karen Olds, Eva Drummond, Kevin Cameron, Heather, Harry Hollander and Valley. Chris Jensen and Marilyn, Matt, Megan and Marilyn, Marcus Williams, Bill and Kate Barker, Judy Mastad, Maya S, Jeannie Cameron, Kathy Bell, Marilyn and Jack Cook, Richard and Mercenary Press. Charlene and Pete Martin, Ashane Carey, the Wilson family, the Bailey family, Roger and Janice Freeland. In peace, 
peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life on earth, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who are for justice, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and David, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and His Church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Especially God our friends. Lord, let your kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit we live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we can only repent. The sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may abide in the world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of God's peace. <laughs>
this week, and we have a few announcements for you. Um, first off, Penny, both Penny and Deacon Tom are on vacation. Penny until June 23rd, and Deacon Tom until um, June 27th. And there, there will be, um, I want to thank Paula Sipoli for office coverage and Barbara Wardcott for office coverage during their vacation. And all these dates can be found on page 15 of the bulletin. Okay, we still are in need of volunteers for coffee hour and um, sound people, ushers, and acolytes. So please see um, our office if you would like to be trained or help out in any way. And coffee hour is just simple. You can sign up at the table. And um, there's a lot of us who have done coffee hour who are willing to give input. It just, we need people to sign up. There are a lot of folks. <laughs> Sometimes it's a good thing to do in Canada. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so um, every Wednesday at noon, we have the new good prayer. Even uh, uh, Deacon Tom's out, or myself, another lay leader, or Robert Betsy will lead that for us. Um, and then uh, a couple of things that are coming up in, towards the end of the month. Family camp, Echo Family Camp, Reverend Betsy is going to be the presider um, there. It's a really great location, great um, fellowship with family of um, our Shelton Diocese. So um, any kind of families are welcome. Um, and it may overlap with our big fireworks um, fundraiser. So if you feel like you want to do both things, um, it's totally, it's totally doable. Um, Beth Alwood is um, putting together the uh, most recent list of needs for coverage on them, and that should be up in the uh, in the narthex when during coffee hour. Um, oh sure. Um, we learned yesterday that we really need the most coverage after the first. So if you are Torn between both events, go to Echo and just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, wanted to uh, other things happening. Uh, you know, feast of family, isn't it? And on June twenty second, um, we will be joining um, the Pride Festival in Stockton. Uh, so we will be. We'll have a booth. It's at Weber Point. Um, it's kind of a, um, I don't know if it's last minute, but it wasn't in our initial planning purposes, right? But it was an opportunity that um, came uh, forward for us. And with all the work that we've done here in Long Island and our congregation, we felt it was really important to, to be there. So if you would like to be there with us, uh, be there as part of St. John's, we would really love that. Um, and uh, Xander Baum is kind of taking charge this Sunday of, um, if you're interested, let them know, um, uh, give her your name, and then once we kind of coordinate scheduling and all of the needs for that, um, Andy or uh, Brad will be reaching out to you. Um, um, This Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our Juneteenth um, worship for service. Yeah. Or in uh, an honor, I believe. So, um, yeah, it's, it's in the calendar. It's kind of eerie, so thank you for laying that out. I'm going to be announcing at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, Wednesday night. 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you both. Yes, we're, we're looking forward to the Juneteenth event. Uh, Rachel Salters has written an original poem to perform on that night. So we're very excited um, to have her do that. Um, uh, Pastor Curtis Smith from Faith in the Valley will be here. 
And so I think it's going to be a wonderful event. We invite you all to be there and invite your friends, your neighbors, uh, your coworkers. We want this to be a very big event. I would like to turn to page. I just had it up there. Page ten at the top of page ten. Happy Father's Day again to all the fathers out there in the many ways that people father, whether um, you had a child of your own, we know that there are many ways to father in this world, so you are included in this as well. Let us pray. Holy God, our first father, advocate, and guide, we give thanks today for the gift of fathers in all their forms. Those who have mentored, sacrificed, challenged, and guided their children to achieve their dreams, and those who make their children laugh and giggle, take risks, and appreciate the silence of a night sky. My dad is here. Can you tell that that one got me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think of my dad for that. Sorry about that. Um, now i got to figure out where I was. Sorry. On this Father's Day, we ask for your blessings upon fathers. Grant them wisdom and humility as they love and guide those entrusted to their care. We ask forgiveness where it is needed and comfort for those who mourn the loss of their father who has gone too soon. Bless all our relationships with the father figures in our lives with generosity, patience, respect, and love. All this we ask in the name of your first son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Birthdays and anniversaries. Who would like to come forward today? Come on now, come on up. Lots of lots of people today. All right, so I invite you to, um, we'll start at the end, I invite you to say your name very loudly and what you're celebrating today. Bill Wells, and uh, my birthday will be tomorrow, Chinese birthday will be on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Wells is my dad. <laughs> so happy birthday, Dad. All right, well, I'm Joey Soria. And I'm Christina Soria. We have a couple of things, so I'll start first. We just want to give thanks to the congregation here in St. John's. Ten years ago on Father's Day was the first day we appeared here. Oh. And so thank you for ten years. Oh. Oh. The second one we want to announce is, is the grand, our granddaughter's um, birth on June 3rd, and she was nine weeks premature, and she will be two weeks old tomorrow. Yay. And what's her name? And her name is Daphne. Daphne. And mom and, and mom and baby are doing great and in their new And we definitely give thanks for the birth of Daphne. Yes. I'm Emily Weichel and my birthday was on June 13th. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Sager and my birthday is tomorrow. I have a birthday twin. There you go. <laughs> there, there's a statistical um, thing about how often that happens. And this is yeah, yeah. And I have a couple of things. So on Tuesday, I celebrate one year ordained as a priest. And I'm so excited to celebrate that here at St. John's with you, right where I'm supposed to be. Uh, and then on Thursday, uh, my husband and I are celebrating 27 years of marriage. So, <laughs> I'm shiny money. <laughs> I had this up in pocket, so I didn't have <laughs> 27. Thank you. All right, in the middle of page 10 is our birthday and anniversary blessing. And I'll hold this kind of so you all can see it too. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase, 
Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering.
and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at the table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves as a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world that you have made in the fullness of time. Bring us with St. John and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feed at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever.
one station in the center for the bread, and then we can split off for two stations for the wine. We do not antique our bread here, which is dipping the bread into the wine. Um, so if you do not want to partake of the wine, just cross your chest, and that will let us know your preference, and you'll still receive the blessing. If you do not want communion and would like a, a blessing, please come forward and cross yourselves, and that will let me know your preference there. We also have gluten-free. I've already touched the bread, so the gluten-free will be made available to you, and you can pull that out of the container yourself, and I will offer the blessing. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith in his name.
Let us rise in body or spirit. Today we have her going out to visit some of our folks that we can. Um, and we will find this prayer that we'll say together on in the middle of page 13 on the sending of Eucharistic visitors. In the name of St. John the Baptist Epistle Church, we send you forth very useful gifts that those who go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. 